thin and light gaming laptops with a 6-core processor and a 1660 Ti, they're all over the place. But as soon as you want a Thunderbolt 3 and a bigger battery, now they are 30 to 50% more expensive than I think they should be. And thanks to the MAG-15, that's all changed. Welcome to my in-depth review of the Electronics MAG-15. Inside the MAG-15 is the i7-9750H, a GTX 1660 Ti. We're running dual channel RAM, two 8 gigabyte sticks at 2666. For storage, we have two M.2 slots. One of those is occupied with a half a terabyte Intel 660p NVMe. The network interface card is the Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6, and the icing on the cake here is the extremely large 93 watt hour battery. Portability on the MAG-15 is spectacular. Where else are you going to get, for this price, a 4.2 pound magnesium alloy build that's extremely rigid, has a 93 watt hour battery, allows me to watch movies for 8 or 9 hours, I can do typical uh, emails, Word, Skype, uh, browsing the internet for 5 to 7 hours, and even video edit for up to 3 hours. This is a very nice package here, not to mention, you know, the 230 watt brick may look large, but that's only because the chassis is so small. I like laptops like this. I don't need the power supply to get me through my own typical day. If I want to sit out on this porch and do some work, go to the park, just get out of being cooped up in my home. I can do that with the way this laptop is set up. So electronics, good job. Over on the left hand side, we have a Kensington lock, some exhaust, USB 3.1, a microphone in, and a headphone in. On the right hand side, we have a full size SD card reader connected via USB 2.0, two USB 3.1s, and an exhaust. And over on the rear features plenty of exhaust, an actual Thunderbolt 3, an HDMI, a LAN port, and the barrel power plug. All right, let's talk usability of the MAG 15, starting with the glass trackpad. The glass trackpad is slightly oversized when compared to the Aero 15, and double tapping in the top left hand corner will disable the trackpad and we are greeted with an LED to represent this. Now onto the keyboard. Hot topic here. Many people have been asking me on the forums and on the YouTube channel, Bob, what's the keyboard like? After all, this is a thin and light laptop. It's got a big battery, so people are going to use this as a dedicated work machine just as much as they are gaming, if not more so, right? So the keyboard, all mechanical keys with two millimeters of travel. I was a bit wary at first because the first three or four days, there's a bit of a break-in period where the keys feel like you're taking a marble and pushing it down a cement tube. I can confidently tell you that we're past that break-in point now and this has been one of my favorite keyboards that I have used to date. That's saying a lot because one, I don't like mechanical keyboards and two, I prefer a number pad. The keys are large. They feel good after you break them in and they're not obnoxiously loud. They did a really good job here on this. I'm very proud to tell you that after break in, I think you're gonna like this keyboard, but this is a very subjective thing, so please keep that in mind. The display is full HD, 144 hertz, Panel part number is BOE084D. Now, post color calibration came in at around 97% standard RGB and 75% Adobe RGB. 350 nits, and that's a nice upgrade in brightness when compared to the Aero 15 side by side. Now, when we move on to the IR camera, in my opinion, this is the best way to feature Windows Hello. It's responsive, and I much prefer this over the fingerprint, as I do find the fingerprint on most laptops is hit or miss, whereas the IR camera, once you get it, it's typically fire and forget. Now, what about that webcam and microphone? Have a look and listen. All right, so the 720p webcam and microphone are located at the top of the bezel. Now, keyboard strokes of our mechanical keys sound like this. Now the idle acoustics of the MAG-15 are going to range anywhere between 26 decibels and 30 decibels. 26 decibels is absolutely silent, but there comes a point where it does trigger the fans based on thermals and it will go up to 30 decibels. Now the class leading idle acoustics are typically around 28 dB and this one falls right in between that 26 to 30. Maximum fans, however, do sound like this and you can still hear my voice over the fans, but you are able to pick up on both. So there is that. Now the control center software gives us that per key RGB as well as being able to control the LED in front of our MAG-15. 
We also have four different power modes. For the sake of simplicity, we basically have a performance, a balanced, a quiet mode, and then the benchmark mode. The benchmark mode will unleash the TDP of both CPU and GPU and max out the fans. The performance mode will do all of that, but it won't max out the fans. It'll allow them to scale. Balance mode basically disables electro boost, runs the CPU in a much more traditional wattage, and then quiet mode, well, it basically is just that. We get nice decibels around that 26 to 30 dB, and overall, just a nice unplugged experience, so I highly recommend it. Now, when it comes to the CPU, we have that 9750H set to thermal throttle at 90 degrees Celsius. It does come with a 50 millivolt undervolt, which is very nice from the factory. Feel free to increase this to around negative 0.125. More on this on the upcoming thermal and frame rate performance with gameplay. When it comes to the GPU, we do have thermal throttle limitations of 75 degrees Celsius. And within a hot second here, you're gonna see what that looks like for gaming performance, what that looks like when we tune it, and then what that looks like when we bypass it. Let's rock and roll. So with these thermal limitations in place, you are going to see your CPU get up to the 90 degrees Celsius range, maybe trickle just a little bit over, and of course our GPU is going to cap at around that 74 degrees Celsius as it will begin to throttle at 75. Now here we have a great deal of heat soak, some titles within a first few minutes, other titles took 10 or 15 minutes, but nonetheless we have now hit the bottom end of the 1660 Ti spec of 1455 megahertz, and here it's going to sit for about 90 99.9% of the time during games. The 2070 Max-Q is going to operate the same way except it's going to have a bottom end frequency different than the 1660 Ti. So here's what that's going to look like on your end upon firing up your favorite title. We have a very high boost frequency with little to no power limit throttling. But as we get to that 74 to 75 degrees Celsius thermal threshold, you're going to start to see the frequency throttle, and as the system becomes more and more heat soaked, that will eventually bottom itself out to, in this case, the spec of 1455 megahertz, which is still legit and within spec for the 1660 Ti inside of a laptop. Now, to be honest with you, I'm actually okay with this from a usability standpoint, however, what I want to know is, can we use some of the Bob of All Trades tuning guides that I have revealed in the past with MSI Voltage Curve Editor and Throttle Stop in order to maximize the performance and thermal performance from the MAG-15? Let's find out. Now check out this thermal performance in Apex Legends. Try not to get too addicted to that awesome frame rate. This is just some personal gameplay as I do not like to play with completely max settings. For that, you saw what to expect earlier. Pretty typical 1660 Ti stuff. There's three things that you need to be made aware of. One, each laptop will have its own extreme limits. Copying and pasting the numbers that I'm about to reveal to you might not be the best solution for you and getting that dialed in, that's gonna be more like it. Number two, the ambient temperature will make a big difference. Right now I'm sitting at around 73 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 22 to 23 degrees Celsius. If you have a cooler environment, there's a good chance you may be able to push a little bit further. Warmer environments obviously might not be so lucky. And thirdly, the title that you play is going to make a big difference in dictating what kind of limits that you can push on your MAG-15. The first thing we need to do is enable benchmark mode. This is going to give us maximum power of everything and more importantly, max out the fans. Without this, anything that you do to improve thermal performance is only going to make for a quieter laptop. You will still see the thermals raise up to their maximum. Next, we're going to address the CPU by using software called Throttle Stop. I will have a link in the description below with a tutorial on how to use that correctly. In this case, we are going to undervolt both core and cache to negative .125, and then power limit one and two to 35 watts. And the very last step is to address the GPU. Here we are going to tweak the frequency and the voltage curve editor using the MSI voltage curve editor. Link in the description below for a video on how to cover that so you can dial in your own GPU. In this case, we are going to lock the frequency somewhere around 1700 megahertz at 0.8 volts. Don't forget, every laptop's going to be different, and with a very low ceiling for thermal throttle limitations, this means that you're really going to have to focus a lot on dialing in the machine 
on your end. Let me give you an example, as Apex Legends, while relatively intense, it is no Battlefield 5. So applying these exact same settings and playing that game, you can see just how close we are getting to that 74 to 75 degree threshold. I did manage to keep off of this for several hours of gameplay, but this is very close. And just a couple of degrees warmer ambient temperature would have definitely triggered frequency throttling. So with that tune applied, here's a side-by-side -side look with Battlefield 5's firing range. You can see we get a nice little performance bump with my tune, and we don't compromise the thermals on both GPU and CP respectively. Not too bad, just make sure you do not copy and paste my results, dial them in on your own. Now when it came to thermal paste testing, what you see before you is liquid metal conducto knot on the CPU and master gel on the GPU and absolutely no tuning whatsoever. Take a look at the GPU temperatures now in the top left hand corner and notice that they have trickled past that 75 degrees Celsius thermal throttle threshold. Anytime you apply liquid metal to one part you get a really good efficiency and now you're going to transfer that heat from the CPU over to the GPU as a result. So now with a well-tuned MAG-15 per the tuning that I have been using in this review, the top clip shows stock thermal paste performance, the middle clip shows Master Gel Maker on both the CPU and GPU, and the bottom clip will have the Thermo Grizzly Conducto Knot Liquid Metal on the CPU and Master Gel on the GPU. Don't be alarmed here, this is relatively normal. Most thin and light laptops do not respond quite as well to thermal paste upgrades as some of the bigger laptop chassis do. Spite the thermals, regardless of any test provided, the WASD keys were always under 30 degrees Celsius while the rest of the keys were still typically around that 40 degrees Celsius mark or less, it was really nice experience to actually game on. They were able to do this by design. This was not an accident. They put several large holes over the WASD section where the fans are in order to pull and draw a lot of cool air inside. Now for the grand finale, the clip on the right hand side. You should take note that we do have a much higher FPS performance, but not only that, I was able to bypass the 75 degree Celsius GPU limitation and bump that up to the traditional factory spec of 87 degrees Celsius. Now this could be done with software called Asus GPU Tweak 2. It will literally take you longer to download than it will to activate. It's a nice quality of life. You can have it start on boot within a minimized mode and you will never even know it's there. But with that, you are gonna get a little bit warmer laptop at this point. Now I know what you're thinking. Why don't we just use the MSI Voltage Curve Editor and tweak what we've got now with a higher GPU thermal limitation. Well, trust me, folks, I tried that and I really didn't have much luck. We are already pushing the boundaries with what we're getting now with Electro Boost, and there was little to no tuning I could get out of this whatsoever. Perhaps you'll have a little bit better luck on your end, but I have spoke with a few people and their results happen to be the same. Regardless, this was a simple way to increase the thermal threshold of our GPU within the MAG-15, as well as that strong Electro Boost frequency to maximize performance. But because we are pushing at the brink of what this GPU is capable of due to Electro Boost, I was honestly unable to get anything dialed in using the MSI Voltage Curve Editor. Furthermore, using liquid metal on the CPU and aftermarket non-conductive thermal paste on both CPU and GPU was not giving us any thermal performance worth mentioning here. I wish I had some more content here for you at this point, but I honestly don't. Here, we have a higher GPU limitation, we have a higher GPU frequency, we have Electro Boost, but as far as tuning when it's at the brink like this, I had no such luck on my particular chassis. With a little bit of work, perhaps you can get yours dialed in even better. Now on laptops that are throttled in this way, you have to take benchmarks with a grain of salt. Sure, the Cinebench 20 scores are amazing, but when we're talking unleashing the GPU thermal limitations and then comparing that with a stock setup, as you can see here in Firestrike, the scores are the same. Most benchmarks are not going to be run long enough to saturate and heat soak the actual system properly like an actual game will. One thing left out with today's thermal testing. I happened to come across a bug several days ago and I posted a video about this on the channel. The button on the actual keyboard deck itself that will cycle through the performance profile, such as performance, balanced, and quiet mode. Well, if you were to go into your BIOS and do nothing more than to quit and save, 
that would no longer cycle through the profiles. It would only act as a maximum fan button and a maximum fan button only. And this allowed us to go into the balance mode where we got a stock GPU performance and the TDP of the CPU was lowered to what would typically be stock as well. But now maxing out your fans and it offered pretty good thermal performance. Now, technically this was a bug and the latest BIOS 5.2 removed this. So now everything is working correctly per the manufacturers where this chassis come from. So just keep that in mind. So with that said, to segue into the software, I have been working very hard with electronics to make sure that the best version of this software will be made public very soon. There's a few things that we want to tweak in order to get the best thermal performance and just overall so things make sense for the user and give that individual some options. So the question I have for you is this, how would you use your MAG-15? Out of the box performance and just let it be? Would you decide to follow some of my tuning guides and get near electro boost type performance while maintaining really great thermal performance? Would you use the Asus GPU tweak and now take that 75 degree GPU cap move it up to the factory 87 degrees and just let it rip with the understanding that tunability at this point is going to be slightly limited and of course your mileage may vary on that or the one that doesn't exist right now would you accept a bios update that would just remove that 75 degree cap and give us the 87 degree celsius with the understanding that in order for you to get better thermal performance you are going to have to down tune the system back to ultimately the way that it was whether you wanted to use asus gpu tweak there's plenty of tools out there in order for you to get a cooler system just by lowering the voltage wattage frequency you name it would you prefer that type of setup? Let me know in the comments below and perhaps I'll start a community poll on YouTube with those four options because I genuinely want to know and then perhaps I can forward this to the people that matters the most. Now when it comes to the audio in the MAG-15, it's my understanding that this chassis is actually certified to use the Sound Blaster software. At this time, we do not have a direction to take people in order to get that installed. Hopefully some future information will reveal how to do that. With that said, let's see what this sounds like compared to the Aero 15. Take a look in the BIOS and let's wrap this up. American Megatrends BIOS, while relatively basic looking, offers a few extra features not often found, such as being able to disable specific ports. We can also disable turbo boost or hyper threading separately, as well as choose the amount of cores that we want to run within our laptop 1 through 6. My bottom line, this is a game changing laptop. It's going to be very difficult for me to recommend brands that would be this particular laptop's competitor, especially when it comes in that much cheaper. We get great port selection, absolutely amazing build quality, an incredibly small footprint when you compare it to the already small Aero 15. But at the end of the day, one thing you absolutely have to keep in mind is your priorities. Do you need a big battery type laptop? If so, this is one of the best solutions out there per the spec and genre that it is trying to fill. If you do not need this unplugged runtime, of course there's other laptops from electronics, perhaps the Mac G2 that you could go with that may offer a little bit better gaming performance, but this thing as an overall package is really the jack of all trades type laptop and electronics, I think you did as good of a job as you could have possibly done. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed my review. Links in the description for all this stuff and uh, folks, I worked very hard on this and I will continue to do so. And uh, thanks for watching.